Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're working on a 2007 Mercury Mountaineer and I want you to listen real quick. That rumbling noise is a bad wheel bearing. And what it's causing, it's causing a ABS and traction control light as well because in that wheel hub assembly is the ABS sensor. So you can see the ABS and traction control lights are on as well as that little wrench in the information center. So I'm gonna go scan the computer real quick and it'll get the exact codes and we'll verify that the front driver's side wheel bearing is no good. So I'm gonna hit the read codes button. I'm gonna do an all system module check and we'll let that go and see what codes we get. Okay, so we have a few codes we wanna check out. First one, code C, one, two, three, three. And you can see the frequently reported fix is to replace the left front wheel bearing assembly. Check out this other one, C1155. Left wheel bearing assembly replacement again. So using a scan tool on more advanced vehicles is a possible method to check the wheel bearing. In this case, since the ABS is built into the wheel bearing and the ABS is no longer functioning, it's gonna let you know when the wheel bearing is bad. Now let's jack the car up and physically check the wheel bearing for play. So with the vehicle safely supported on jack stands and I use the jack as extra protection, and with the rear tires blocked off so the car won't roll, we could go check out the front wheel bearing and make sure that is our problem. I'll show you the play really quickly. And I have a video on how to diagnose a bad wheel bearing. So if you want to make sure, just go check out that video real quickly. But obviously this bearing is shot. So to replace this wheel bearing, I'll be using a brand new Mevatec wheel bearing hub assembly. It comes with everything you need, including the ABS harness. And best of all, it's going to get this car back on the road. So let's go install it. So this process is going to apply to Mercury, Fords, and pretty much any vehicle that is front wheel drive and has a bolt-in hub bearing assembly. The first step is going to be to get this center cap out. If you get it out without taking the wheel off, great. We're going to have to take the wheel off and pop it out. The reason why is because you're going to have to get to the axle nut. So we'll remove the tire. So you just want to get behind here and pull that metal ring out. Watch your face so that doesn't pop out and hurt you. And once that metal ring is out, just get a flathead screwdriver. Lightly pry it and that'll pop right out. So now we'll put the tire back on and throw on a couple of lug nuts. So I put on three lug nuts, now we're gonna lower the tire onto the ground. Now to remove the axle nut in here, we're gonna be using one of these axle nut sockets. This is a 32 millimeter. Now when getting an axle nut off, these things are on there tight. So you're gonna need a breaker bar and then maybe even a cheater bar on your breaker bar. It really depends. If you have air tools, use the air tools. It'll make it nice and easy to get off. I'm gonna try using the breaker bar first. Okay, that's not that bad. Sometimes these things are a real pain to get off. That actually wasn't that bad. Now with that loosened, we could raise the vehicle, take the tire off, and move on to the next steps. After taking the tire off, I always slide the tire underneath the car for extra safety. So now we can take the axle nut off the rest of the way. You might need to take a screwdriver and put it in the slots of the rotors to hold your brakes in place. So just stick the screwdriver right in there and I'll give you enough resistance to take that right off. Again, air tools would make this a lot easier, but if you don't have, this just goes to show you, you could do it without air tools. There we go, got the axle nut off. The next step is to take off the brake caliper and rotor. We're gonna do all this in one step so we don't have to remove the brake pads and all we need to do is remove the two caliper bracket bolts. One's right up here, and the other one's right down here. So now we're gonna use a 21 millimeter on a breaker bar. Break the top bolt loose. Break the bottom bolt loose. With both bolts loose, now we can take them out all the way with our ratchet. Good. Now we'll go to the top here. the top bolt out. Now we're gonna get a bucket, slide the bucket underneath, and this is where we're gonna put our whole brake caliper and brake rotor assembly. And we'll leave it just like that. So with the wheel straight and not at an angle, get a big hammer 
and we're gonna hit the axle stud inwards. You don't wanna hit directly on this, so get your axle nut, screw it on, just so that's flush. And you can see the axle is moving inwards a little bit. And that's just gonna break the axle free. So when we try to remove the bearing hub assembly, it won't be stuck to the axle. Good. Now we have just three bolts holding the bearing hub assembly in. So you can see here there's one, there's two, and on the other side there's three right there. Always try to make things easier for yourself and work with the car. So to get more access to the bolts, we'll turn the knuckle. Now we're going to crack the two hub bolts on this side loose with the breaker bar because they're going to be really tight. We'll do the bottom bolt first and the socket is a 15 millimeter. Good. Now we'll do the top. Good. And now we can use our ratchet to remove the bottom bolt completely. Good. And now we can do the same for the top bolt. Loosen that up. Good. Now the other bolt is on the other side, so we're just going to turn this. We'll loosen it with our breaker bar. And then we could go in there with our ratchet and loosen it up the rest of the way. So all three bolts are out of the bearing. We're gonna push this this way so it's straight. Now we have this slide hammer kit. You can rent this for free at your auto parts store. You can buy it, it's a very useful tool to have. I have a link in the description to where you get it. And you just wanna get one of these. This mounts right up to the hub, slides right in, and then you use your lug nuts. Tighten it down all the way, and once these are tightened down all the way, we'll put our slide hammer on it. Now the slide hammer just screws right onto this, and then all you need to do is yank this as hard as you can multiple times and it'll pop the hub right off. Before we go yanking the hub off, don't forget to remove the ABS sensor right here. So just go in here, remove that, wiggle this, and this should come out, just like so. And now that that's disconnected, we can pull the hub bearing assembly out. Now this is being really stubborn, so we're going to use some penetrating fluid. Right at that seam there where the hub meets the knuckle. If my homemade penetrating fluid doesn't work, I don't know what will. Listen to that sizzle. Okay, here it comes. Okay. And that's what happens when you let the Steeler ship replace your hub bearing assembly. This bearing was replaced before, and I would have had no trouble getting it off if they just added a little bit of anti-seize. On top of that, the replaced bearing went bad quickly. So they must have used a junk bearing, which is why we're replacing it with a good one. I don't want this to discourage you. This was the most difficult bearing I ever had to take off. But we still got it off with a hammer and some penetrating fluid. We're going to be using anti-seize on the back of the new bearing. That way it'll actually come out if it ever needs to be replaced again. Which it probably won't. But you never know. And that's all it takes. A little bit of anti-seize right on there and right on here. And that would have popped right off no problem. Instead I had to spend forever trying to knock that thing off. Now on this surface you want to get some sandpaper, something a little bit abrasive. And just sand it down a little bit. Just gonna clean off this surface, make sure it's smooth. You could use like a 400 or 600 grit. In this case, I'm just using this abrasive sponge. It's like a scotch bright type thing. And once you get the outside clean, don't forget the inside. And you're just removing any of that rust, any unevenness. Again, we're going to take our anti-seize and we're going to put some right on these threads here. 
That'll just prevent that from locking up. That didn't lock up, but just in case, next time, it'll be easy to pop the axle out. The other thing we want to go in here, just a little bit of anti-seize around the whole edge. And that just prevents binding of the metals. So we have the ABS sensor from the old bearing. Our new bearing comes with a nice new ABS line, and that's what we're going to replace it with. So right up here, there's an 8mm screw. Just take that out. This will pop off. Just pop it out of here. Over here we'll need a screwdriver. Let's get your flathead screwdriver in here. Pop this clip open. Just like so. Follow it up. This just pops out. And then it goes up into the engine bay. So we're up in the engine bay. If we look down here, here's our ABS wire. We could pull this all the way through. Follow the wire to where it attaches the pigtail, and then we have the pigtail right here, and you just push down the tab with your thumb and remove it just like that. Now with the ABS wire disconnected and removed, we could put our new hub bearing in. When installing the hub bearing, pay attention to which side the ABS wire is coming out of. You just slide it on, give it a little wiggle to get it on the spindle here. It might help to hold up the axle so you can slide this in. And you can see our ABS line is right to the side here. That's where we want it to be. It's going to click in right in here. Leave that for now. Right now we want to make sure these holes line up. So I have our three wheel bearing bolts. And you can see they had Loctite on them. So I'm going to put some blue, which is removable Loctite, right where the red was. Just like so. And that just prevents vibrations from loosening them up. We're also going to torque them down to 75 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll start with the top one here. Make sure it lines up. Thread it in by hand. It'll actually go in pretty far by hand, assuming that you have this aligned properly. There we go. The next one we'll do is the bottom one. Good. And the last one we'll do is all the way on the other side. Okay. So now we're going to get our torque wrench and we're going to torque all three of those bolts down to 75 foot pounds. It's one. That's two. And then for the third one, we'll turn the wheel. And that's three. The new bearing is in. So with that torqued into place, now we can run our ABS wire, and that pops into there, and this, it's mounted right to here. So the next thing is we're going to snap it in to here, so this gets snapped in here. This goes right here, just like that. Now we're bringing this up here. Snap this right in, and then this goes up into the engine compartment. So we'll come up into the engine compartment, grab our ABS wire, that'll snap right in. Good. Now with the wheel bearing bolted in and the ABS wire connected, let's get the brakes back on. Now we have our two caliper bolts. See where the red Loctite was? Add some blue Loctite. Align the caliper up with the bolt, hand tighten it, do the same thing for the bottom bolt, get it into place and hand tighten it. Now once both bolts are in place, tighten them down with the ratchet. Do the same for the bottom. Once we're done tightening the caliper bolts, we could torque them down to 100 foot-pounds each. Do the bottom first, and then the top. Now I don't know if you saw it, but my greasy hands got onto the brakes here. So you want to make sure you clean that off before you put everything together. Now just snug down your lug nuts before we lower the car into the ground. 
Then we'll lower the car on the ground and torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. And then we have one last step. You want to get your new axle nut and we're going to put it on and torque it down. I like to add a little bit of blue Loctite in here. Just get that on there. Now we're going to grab our torque wrench and we're going to tighten this down to 190 foot-pounds. Okay. That's how you change the wheel bearing in a Mercury Mountaineer or Ford Explorer. But this wheel bearing hub assembly replacement will be similar on all vehicles that use a bolt-in wheel bearing that has an axle that goes through it. So you'll have to remove the axle nut. So we have one last detail. Line it up so it's even. Just give it a pop like that. All done. Now we could go for a ride. So we're going for a ride. The ABS and traction control lights both went off. The wheel bearing is nice and silent. And that's a job well done. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? In the description are gonna be all the tools I used in this video, as well as the bearing. And at the bottom of the video are gonna be three similar videos, just in case you wanna see it on a different car, or if you have a pressed bearing.